welcome all the investors back to the Independent Investor Channel here for weekly highly on video. I know we skipped last week. I was um, engaged in a, uh, another obligation. Um, it happens sometimes, but uh, we'll get back right on the saddle here and speak about the current uh, environment as it uh, affects highly on. I think we start still are in a stagnant period for the company coming off of um, a, a really dynamic uh, report from their last quarterly call. Um, the key one conclusion I thought was um, really telling about where the company currently is and where they're looking to go into the future. I just want everybody to take a pause and understand that they really need to stay focused on what they're invested in, why they're invested what this company can and potentially could achieve going forward. The idea here is to offer uh, a, an objective opinion. Uh, help would be investors to understand that if you're looking to put a time frame on this investment, you're going to be disappointed. If you look at this thing and you expect results at the end of this year, um, we may get a little bit of dabble of positive results on this as the uh, plan unfolds. And that will be great. It will be giving us more data to kind of forecast where we could potentially go. There's been a few in the community who have discussed what we think uh, could be for target units delivered uh, through the Hypertruck ERX, but it brings my focus back to why we are invested in the company. And I really think that needs to be the theme for you guys. Some of you guys are holding extremely large bags. The um, investor ride thus far has been um, uh, zero positive, and it's been uh, a rough ride. And I think if you were to look at the timeline carefully, I, I think you could probably chalk this time frame up that we are in now as the calm before the storm and also justify perhaps maybe the digression in the stock as it reflects to highly on specifically not doing a, a, a whole lot wrong now. However, in the face of um, a much larger economic pressure that's being put on the general microcap space, the supply chain crunch that has plagued uh, the the industry, I've seen prices go up across the board no matter where you are. Um, I'm curious to see how things will play out. And I'm of the belief that we are of the we are in the aftermath of what has been a very, very tough start to the decade, specifically with the impacts of the pandemic that I think people are still recovering from emotionally obviously, uh, but uh, certainly some of the psychological effects of what what has happened. I, I think there's some knee-jerk reaction going on to the supply chain shocks. And I think for a new company like this to come public, I think we really need to acknowledge the speed at which this company can deliver upon its promise to um, electrify the Class 8 space. And I think sometimes we lose hope of that in that we're parsing up orders in the tune of 30. I think what they did was extremely necessary. And I was very excited to see that they shook things up for a lack of better terms. I, I think if this product in, um, in some fashion is going to be introduced to the class eight space, I think they need to be introduced smartly and broadly um, and in um, lower volumes to make sure that their outreach is um, to the maximum benefit. Thomas Healy just spoke about this this week on the idea of penetration, and he used the same analogy that I used after the call in that would you rather have one fleet with 30 deliveries or would you have rather have 30 fleets um, each of which have have a truck uh, or two. I think it'll fall somewhere in the middle with regard to the initial rollout of the units. I think the, 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 the fairly silent landscape coming off of a firestorm of information after the ACT Expo 
only speaks to their focus. And again, this is coming from the CEO and the sales team and ensuring that those 30 rigs will be delivered. And I think they're queuing up those uh, uh, announcements as we speak. I think stand by for roles. Um, I think to introduce information now of a positive nature would only fall on deaf ears. Um, I don't think that the short interest in the stock helps the situation. Um, but if you look at it from the perspective that I've looked at, I, I've been able to basically double my share position here um, in in the low ones. I'm not buying the stock here yet because I do see the settling out of the stock here uh, somewhere, perhaps maybe in the levels that we're looking at now. I, I think anything you know sub five dollars is an absolute steal. Uh, if our thesis of the company is correct and that we're investing in a product that we believe in that could absolutely make a difference in the class eight space. And I think that's inevitably where we're going. My bullish conviction would tell me that not only is the product good, but fleets are going to have to integrate whether or not they like it or not. Um, and those that are on the forefront of the new technology being introduced to the fleet are going to be put to the rigor. And my assessment thus far is that the new technology that is being tested now is failing miserably. It is absolutely falling on its face. And I think a lot of us could have predicted this, um, especially in the Hylian community. Thomas Healy's spoken about this. If you just listen um, and stop being a bandwagon um, cheerleader for a company with a cool name. You you would really stop and see and parse through what I feel like is a lot of confusion in the industry. Now, I, I would chalk most investors up as bandwagon players anyway, so you can eliminate most of them. But for those astute investors out there that truly look at the opportunity, I mean, it was right blatantly in front of everybody's face at the ACT Expo, having a diesel generator out there running and charging the BEV vehicles. And I understand in the same breath that the BEV community is going to come back over the top and say, Ryan, what do you expect them to do? Yada, yada. It's on a you know uh, um, a remote location at the, at the ACT Expo, blah, 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 blah. And supposedly make me justify that type of thing but it really isn't about the singular generator providing power source it's the deeper question of understanding the the, the wheel to well type of application that thomas healy has talked about not for months but for years in his address with hylion specifically with the coal burning plants that provide the electricity to the grid that even the grids are having a hard time issuing the necessary permits. And even if you could get a permit, the cost to achieve those permits and provide the right amount of kilowatt uh, input for your trucks, let alone the infrastructure necessary to put that power uh, to to the fleets that are, um, I think, hungry. I, I really think that they're, they're hungry. But I think to speak of the undertone of where this energy has come from is the deeper question. And it's really one of my flagship bullish thesis on Hylion, aside from the AI crave right now and the cloud computing and data and algorithmic uh, opportunity that exists with Hylion that doesn't get a lot of discussion. It doesn't get a lot of hype in what Hylion is looking to do, I think they could achieve hype in this one small vertical. I say small vertical. CEOs have identified this vertical as the very vertical that sets Hylion apart. And I'm talking about their onboard monitoring of the, the rig. In this case, it's going to be the hyper truck to be able to provide some predictive maintenance and analytics to the fleet. And and the idea is it's not just the generator, it's not just the e-axle, rather the ERX as a system's whole, when you take the totality of the components that are put together to make the ERX, this is one of those critical pieces to the story that I, I think falls on deaf ears. 
And I think, again, if there were any progressions on this front now, I think with the stock market that I have monitored since 2020, minus a few fits and spurts, would absolutely fall on deaf ears. I do not think that we are in conducive markets to achieving market dominance. I don't believe that Hylion is in a place to begin to uh, re uh, receive some of the benefits from that. In other words, I think they're too premature in their, in their product development and getting the necessary certifications. This could be the greatest gift that has ever been provided to a company in way of the company's cash that they have and their ability to, I don't want to say slow play, but the idea was to maximize the opportunity of their reach with their existing build slots that they have for the 30 units. And I think they feel like they're a little bit closer than they originally projected for 210, rather to focus on those first 30, get those in the hopper, actually having been shifted to the left here after the Q1 call and actually start to uh, organically create some of that um, fleet penetration opportunity. And I, I think once some of the buzz starts to happen, and this is presumptuous on my part, guys, okay? I'm looking at a stock right now in reality, and I have it coming out my ears. When I look at a stock that is recessed to a point where the market is assessing a company that's going to go out of business, OK, they're only being credit for uh, X number or a certain percentage of the cash and cash equivalents that they have on the book and nothing in way of their product. Absolutely nothing. The market is pricing right now a highly on holdings that will not make it. It will burn out of its cash and it will be unable to penetrate the market. The question for you and I and everyone out there is, does the market have it right? Does the market have it right? OK, and I think it, it will ultimately come down to the ability for Hylion to execute in a way that preserves that cash burn until they can get to a point where the maximum amount of fleets. And again, I'm not suggesting that fleets are going to take a hold of this product, which I'm going to get into shortly. As to why I think the verticals with Hylion are all too often very overlooked, if not forgotten. Again, the price now being uh, priced as a company with a bunch of cash holdings. That's it. I, I don't think with the data and onboard computing, I don't think they're provided any type of opportunity. I think with regard to their uh, TAM, their total addressable market, I don't think they're being provided any opportunity to penetrate that mar uh, market outside of nothing, okay? I don't think they're provided any type of value over the Carno technology, whether it be stationary power or uh, Carno technology uh, in the ERX. I don't think they're being provided any value whatsoever I mean, zero across the board, guys, if I could see it, I would tell you the only stock value that is being assessed right now is at liquidation value. That's it. They are not being provided any forward looking value. Thomas Healy kind of talked about this on the interview this week with regard to a market a couple of years ago that rewarded future cash flow. Um, I agree with that to an extent. Uh, I am a little bit um, puzzled when I hear Thomas Healy, and it's his job to speak from a position of strength. Um, Hylion is not in a position of strength, okay? Um, I'm, I'm just here to break it to you. There will be people who disagree with me. Company's doing fine, Ryan. You're being overreaching. I'm not. Um until these guys can actually sell their product, and I'm not talking about selling their product on a one-off, these first 30 units are critical. <laughs> they are critical. 
if this product cannot be put in the hands of the fleets and the fleets across the board, I'm not talking about 50% market penetration and success, success being that they take ownership of these trucks, they love them, and they want to augment and integrate immediately. Okay, that's a slam dunk. 50% of the fleets can't say, I like the product, but we're not interested. We're going to move in another direction. 50% of the fleets cannot do that. Okay. Hylion has got to have an opportunity for not only fleet penetration. And in this case, I don't want to say fleet penetration outside of introduction because these first 30 trucks, let's be real guys, is an intro to the Hylion solution. It is an introduction to the fleets. Can they run the route? They're going to want run the route for a matter of months, maybe even six months to a year to make sure that they can stare down that TCO benefit, the Hylion boast all too often. We need to make sure that the fleets can actually realize that. All right. Thomas Healy's thinking about these things. Um, I don't know how the man thinks, but he said this uh, in a matter that made an investor like myself understand that quality and uh, uh, dependability is of the utmost importance. This isn't just a science project that can further technology. This is an actual um, project that needs to be implemented to the Class 8 space and actually perform at the high demands of rigor that the Class 8 space can deliver for um, these, these units that are tools. Um, they are working tools for these companies to move product. Now, through the introduction of the product, the first 30 units, is there going to be enough generated churn? Will there be problems? Yes, it will be the success of Hylion to uh, navigate through those issues and make sure that the fleets have all the support that they need to get excited about taking follow-on orders and inevitably be in a place where I've heard Thomas Healy talk about this a couple of times now, a potential for hundreds of orders in 2024. Now we've got a cap, me personally, of about 4,000 to 5,000 units actually to really start to get up into the interesting category. Now, if they're doing 4,000 units uh, per year, we are not talking about a stock anymore, nor a company, a stock that reflects said company that is trading at a dollar and 65 cents. We are not talking about that. We are talking about a stock that's at $25 minimum. If they've got the ability to sell their powertrain in um, amounts of thousands, then we are talking about a $25 to $50 stock at that point, because now we can put predictable metrics on it get it back up to at least that $1.5 to $3 billion, get it back up into that mid-cap ca uh, category where I, I think this company does belong. But in the interim, we have a stock right now that is in its current state being valued at nothing. It is being valued at nothing, the company, okay? The, the, the eyes of the stock market cannot deny hard physical capital, okay? But I think when it comes to the analysts, they don't help at all. They have their own agendas to drive the stock down. Um, I'm not even gonna talk about the short interest in the company, but the short interest is enough to really suppress the company and provide daily stock charts that are abnormal and unnatural for a company of this uh, size and magnitude. This isn't a $20 million company, all right? This is still a $350 million company, once valued over a billion dollars, I might add, and has the potential to get back up to those levels for all of the right reasons, whereas before it was for all of the wrong reasons, in my opinion, should have never been up where it was. But it just speaks to the two different markets that we're dealing with now, as opposed to what we were dealing with then, in that you know, innovation was awarded forward-thinking initiative, it was awarded. Now, if Hylion ends up making something of this, then they'll have the see, I told you so uh, on the side. But right now, every stock that came public during the last couple of years that had something to offer to the marketplace are all being punished to the extent of 
not being in a position to raise ample capital to continue on. So it's either make it or break it. Uh, so highly on really is a prove it story. And I cannot stress enough. It's difficult for me to even entertain the idea of hundreds of units, let alone thousands of units. But I want to caution you of this. If the 30 units cannot generate enough churn to step up to the potential for thousands of, excuse me, hundreds of orders, then we'll never get to thousands of orders anyway. So I, I want to really emphasize the importance of those first 30 orders as they are the first 30 pawns of showcase opportunity in the fleet. So we're going to get to see them driving the roads all kinds of opportunity to hear fleet feedback, not from Hylion's bias perspective on what they should do in the fleet, rather what the fleets are experienced that they are doing in their respective fleets. And I think that's going to pay huge dividends when we talk about stepping up the amount of sales over time. And once those sales expand over time, then we would expect that the margins would start to expand out a little bit too. Now, for me, basic operating capital expenditure and revenues to augment those capital expenditures is absolutely the key right now. I could give two shits less about margins right now. I could care two shits about profit right now, okay? We start to knock down this uh, roadmap to fleet augmentation, we are talking about a company that has an opportunity to generate revenues. And again, we're not talking about a $25 to $50 stock at that point. We're talking about a potential for a multi-hundred dollar stock at that point. The reason why I say that is because the market opportunity is so huge. We've talked nothing in the first few minutes of this weekly video to talk about highly on the company and highly on the stock. There's many more undertones of global tension that are going on right now that could help shake things loose. In other words, imagine an opportunity where Hylion and the stock continue to do just about what they're doing now until the fleet augmentation starts. Now, the fleet uh, penetration starts at the end of this quarter. So we're going to start to see the units and the fleet trials uh, start to roll out the end of this quarter. So things are going to start to get interesting within the next few months. And if you're like me, I find myself getting caught up in the day-to-day -day activity of the stock going down every day. This The stock goes down every day. It goes down every single day. <laughs> it's every day. So it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's um it's one of those things where you have to um, reverse mind f your mind um, in uh, rationalizing to yourself as a rational human being that it's not only normal um, but it's actually fun uh, to see your money vaporize like the way that it is every year. But here's the thing: where there is dark period on a stock, and I'm not going to tell you when that's going to end. I can tell you when it started. Um, it started the moment that Hylion hit $58. And for the last couple of years, it has been a slow draw to where we are now, staring down this potential of a uh, show me moment for Hylion. Okay. And that show me moment is going to come in the form of those 30 trucks that are delivered to the fleet. And the fleets are like, okay, we might have something here. I expect that based on my self study, of Hylion, that this product has the best chance once it is in the hands of the fleets to really catch some momentum. I really do. I will be closely monitoring the progress. I will be closely monitoring the reception of the fleet. And I will be carefully balancing the pros and the cons. There will be both. I'm just going to tell you up front. If you think that the Hypertruck ERX is going to fleet, uh, float into these Class 8 fleets on a magic carpet, you, you, need to, you need to come back into reality. These trucks work hard. They work hard under demand. They work hard under load. 
They work hard in different climates in this country and will be expected to work in different climates abroad once the uh, the the global opportunity comes forward. And that's when we start to augment the fleets in multiple capacities with the potential of Hylion just being a powertrain provider to the rest of the world's OEMs and allowing this system to be enjoyed by other fleets. That's the pie in the sky. Now let's come back to reality. Imagine a situation with the current company and stock, both of which I think more so on the company side are doing just fine. They're making the necessary adjustments to their timeline, making the necessary adjustments to the rollout of the ERX. The stock price, not so much. The stock price is suffering right now, and it's suffering in a way that I would explain as a slow bleed, okay? We're not having catastrophic drops. I mean, the discussion for Nikola and the delisting from the exchange was a big jar, stock dropped 20% in one day. We're not having those types of action. I think it's a suppression of the stock right now that is exacerbated by a short selling opportunity. While the entire market is chasing NVIDIA, which I think is indicative of the retail dipshit community out there that are buying NVIDIA hand over fist, they'll miss opportunities like this, all right? And where we will meet a perfect storm of what we know now in reality with the company and the stock, meeting more conducive markets down the line, how do you think that this company is going to perform in conducive markets when they start to rewrite their script as a company that actually has real solutions in the fleet. Now you're going to have people coming out of the woodworks and they'll be kicking over rocks and they'll be saying, see, I told you so. See, here I am. I'm, I, I made this pick. When all the while it was me on YouTube explaining the potential of a stock that is at $1.65 recessed below its current valuation as a company. And all the while, the company is churning on these results to at least put their best foot forward to take these uh, these these units and put them into the hands of the fleets. It's anybody's guess, and it's my conviction that they will be well-received in the fleets. Okay, Then people are going to come back and say, man, I want to introduce you to Hylion Holdings. This is an incredible company. They have a powertrain solution that offers the Class 8 space, a solution that runs on natural gas, renewable natural gas, and has the opportunity to roll out their new and innovative Carnot technology. And oh, by the way, with their partnership can also cover hydrogen fuel cell. And the initial iteration of the ERX gets, oh, I don't know, just a modest thousand miles of range. All of the things that we have studied and conveniently forgotten over the last three years, now the bulls on the company would obviously be in the camp of those that follow the company astutely. For those that have gotten tired of the opportunity, they've probably exited stage left anyway, um, and that's totally fine. Uh, for you guys that are uh, understanding of my conviction, it is just what I've spent a few moments explaining to you over the course of this video. I think we're in a time right now of consolidation. I think we're in a phase of leveling out. Um, I, I think that the amount of company news that could be forthcoming into the end of this year, I mean... I, I don't I don't typically know what it is to make of the ERX 2023 launch. Okay. Now I have my own definition of what that could potentially mean. Is that going to mean that in a non-conducive market that Hylion falls on deaf ears and continues to trade at recessed valuation that is in line with or below their current cash value? Let's be real and not valuing the business that they bring forward? Is it such that we have confusion amongst the marketplace now on what Hylion is? Is it a BEV company? Is it a hydrogen fuel cell company? I don't think a lot of people truly understand the concept of Hylion focusing on those areas of the truck that need focusing. 
to reduce emissions to meet the mandates and incentives that are coming online and allowing the OEMs that have built trucks for 100, 100 years to continue to do that, to allow the racking tests that go on the chassis to continue to be done. They don't need to reinvent those, those pieces of the truck. And the idea here is to augment the truck and the areas that they um, require augmentation uh, to smartly, to smartly uh, replace the uh, internal combustion diesel um, engine uh, with a, a, a just a smarter solution. And, and the question becomes, will the Hypertruck ERX fit in a good portion of the routes, a small portion of the routes? I don't know, but when I look at Hylion's ability to sit across the table from big industry and look at the needs of big industry and understanding that they need long haul capability, they need something that is going to deliver a driver experience to provide the torque and horsepower that is um, demanded over the rigor. I've went through my deliberation up, down, and around each of these attributes of the Hylion product, and I really can't see a I really can't see a flaw with it. Now, the only flaw that we can identify, and I'll try to go out on a limb for you to give you my my most objective opinion about it, is the unknown of how it's going to perform in the rigor of class eight space, where if precedent has been set by the rest of the new and emerging technology completely falling on their face, and I'm speaking about Tesla and Nikola specifically, um, you know, it would beg the question, is Hylion next? Is Hylion, through all of this waiting, through all of this validation, through all of this proof of concept, was it all worth it only to be introduced to the rigor of class eight and 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 fall on its face as well? My friends, we will have that answer and we will have it in a short amount of time here within the next six months. I think we'll have a better understanding of uh, of how the trickle in to the fleet, we can take an assessment of how many trucks are actually working. I think I spotted my first truck actually last week in New York City. Um, I, I saw it. I, I couldn't film it. But to see the trucks out there on the road, actually, I don't know, doing what it is that Hylion boasts that they can do for the for the industry. And I think that's the key in understanding this opportunity is understanding what we are invested in. And I think right now people have conveniently forgot that. I really do. I think people lose their mind. I think they buy into the uh, fatal error in stock market application. Uh, and I think there's probably portfolios swapping out of the market as we speak in the tune of thousands and thousands to buy NVIDIA uh, on this run up. And I, I think... I think it will be uh, something that I will discuss. Uh, it will be something that I scrutinize my entire life. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't presume to have all the answers. I'm one of the few guys that come onto YouTube and actually suggest that investing will uh, will result in mistakes. It is it is not something that can be avoided. It is something that is absolutely inevitable. But where someone can get involved in the stock market and, and incur those mistakes that are easier than you think to incur, to, to actually solidify it as a mistake, as opposed to taking that mistake and turning it into something positive, by focusing on those attributes of stock market investing that truly matter, um, in that time does not matter. Investing in a company, not a stock, matters. Paying attention to the management and the company that you are invested in, the opportunity that exists with that company, the business model that they have established, and the plan to profitability. Does Hylion have a plan to profitability? You ever ask that? How is it that you envisioned outside of the units sold, Silent Alert, uh, Shovashenko, uh, Andreas and the Discord group? They've all done a really, Rick has done a great job of kind of breaking down 
and Hylion has CRM on this, okay? But have you truly looked at what it would take for this company to get to profitability? I'll just put your mind at ease and I'll suggest that we are probably years away. L let's just call it 2027. Let's just wag a, a, something out there and suggest that in 2027 or 2028, five years from now's time, we will have that answer to that question. Now, are we going to evolve to a place from now until then to better understand whether or not we can say with certainty that we are marching toward that end? Yes, as we progress toward that time frame, we will have more transparency on that. But if you expect to have that answer in the day-to-day -day activity that is generated from the stock market, you are sorely mistaken and you will turn those opportunities that I consider to be very, very prevalent in the stock market. And this one is a glaring opportunity as far as I'm concerned. You will turn that into a negative because you have you have subjected yourself and your money to the old onus that if something doesn't work out in a week or a month or six months, or in a time frame that you have disclosed for yourself, which none of it matters, time frames as far as investing in companies doesn't and shouldn't exist. It really shouldn't. If you're invested in the company, great, invest in it inevitably. If you don't want to invest in the company based on the things that you, know, you have seen from an objective lens, then don't invest in a company. And don't get caught up in the middle ground of people who have agendas that are arbitrarily dropping stock prices, but work for the company that actually owns the stock in, in massive share base. Don't get caught up in all that. The agenda that you need to focus on is your own personal agenda with you, your money, and your stock ownership. All right. If you feel like there's more value in owning cash right now, then that's your prerogative to do that. Neither me nor anybody else out there should sway your decision on where you put your loyalty as far as opportunity. But when I look across the board at the TAM, I spoke about it earlier in the video, I cannot envision a world with the, the setup and the way that the SPAC program was designed to allow a company like this to come to the public markets to what? Dissolve away? To fall completely flat on their face? To observe a company over the last three years that in my estimation has actually delivered along their time frame in what has been a night and day flip of market sentiment and has been a headwind ever since. During different times, maybe we're looking at a company that's overvalued in $50 a share and has been able to raise capital two or three times. We are not in that opportunity. John Panzer talked about this right now and the opportunity to throttle back, to carefully and conservatively deploy capital. And I say that tongue in cheek because I am not comfortable with the current $31 million a burn. Um, I tweeted this week. It was one of the only tweets I made uh, on Hylion, and they're burning massive amounts of money. And the percentage of the money that they're making against their cash burn is laughable. It is laughable. And this is part of the reason why the stock currently trades at $1.65, because when you look at the cash burn and their one positive attribute, that is their cash position. Hylion has backed themselves in a corner to deliver upon the units that they said that they were going to deliver upon. And the game that's being played of tug and war, of war right now is can we carefully deploy 30 units into the fleet and expect that units are just going to jump on board a week later and place uh, orders of 10s and 20s and 50s and 100s? I don't see that happening in reality. I don't. I think in the short term, Hylion will get back up to six, seven, eight dollars and they will do a capital raise. They absolutely will to fortify 
their current cash position because for a capital lean business, my concern now as a share owner is the capital expenditures that they have uh, weighed against their current cash burn uh, that they have. And to be burning cash at this at this rate, look at their daily cash burn. It's it's quite remarkable um, that, and I think a very necessary move that was announced on the last quarterly call that they needed to shift their um, their strategic vision to make sure that the product has time to be received by the industry, and make sure that industry has the best opportunity to make the most informed decisions with the fleet mandates that are coming and are inevitable. Allow the OEMs to really get as close as they possibly can to augmentation and really testing out the the rigor of the product in the fleets so that fleets can come back to their OEMs and say, look, this is a product that we can stand behind. We would like to, I don't know, maybe change the color sequence um, and augment with our color sequence, but we want the highly on drivetrain solution um, in our vehicles. We're comfortable with, with working with the company. We're company working with the management. And we feel like Hylion will stand behind us. But, you know, the the tug and pull right now that the market is having a hard time with is understanding when that when that break point and catalyst will shift in the company's sentiment to give the analysts and the institutions enough comfort to uh, suggest that based on their sales and projections that the company can meet their obligations financially. And I never thought two years ago that we would be having this discussion. I didn't. And I think a lot of investors out there, if they just sit back and 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 just put away the whole rah-rah highly on thing for just a second, put the neon pom-poms down for neon green pom-poms down for just a moment and just just entertain the idea that Hylion has backed themselves into a corner. I think they've done so with a wonderful product. I really did, I really do. But having a wonderful product does not mean that they are going to strategically execute to see the end that we are all looking for. And that is fleet integration and to generate fleet interest that is going to generate some real organic churn, which right now they have none. All the orders that were previously disclosed, I have no idea what type of recalculation is happening. I'm hoping that those recalculations are beneficial for Hylion, therefore share owners in the company. I think the pass on of costs just makes sense from a business perspective. That 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 is without said. If a company drops off the ledger because they want what Hylion to eat those costs or honor a deal that was written a year and a half ago, that's not how it works. It's just like any other industry. If I go to buy a loaf of bread in the store today, and it just so happens that bread is on a shortage or eggs or any other product that I that I buy, that that cost is passed right along to me as the as the customer. All right. People still need to make their profits along the way to not only generate the bread, but to transport the bread from the bakery to the storefront so I can conveniently park my car and go in and pick up the bread to feed myself so I don't starve to death, all right? And I will inevitably pay the price for the convenience of that. Hylion builds powertrain solutions. If the cost of the components go up, it is it is reasonable to suggest that those pass those costs within reason actually be uh, be passed on. Now, the inverse is true. When we start to get a little bit of control over this supply chain opportunity and highly on, I, I want you guys to really understand that every day that goes by, the value of highly on increases. Every day that goes by, highly on increases in value. And that is because they are looking at the multitude of components that go into the Hylion system, and they are looking for ways for cost efficiency. They are looking for cost efficiencies in way of the build. Thomas Healy spoke about this as well with regard to the overbuild uh, and the cost uh, improvements that they can make on the units when they um, you know, when they put those in the rigor and understand not only how they perform, but the learnings that come from that, that there's a lot of data that has gone into getting us where we are now 
But guys, think about the data that is going to be drawn off of the trucks going forward, the internal component evaluation to understand which components can be improved upon, which can be sourced from different vendors. All of that value increases over time. So while we're sitting on a stock of $1.65, Think about it from a company perspective. I know that Hylion is not sitting static. I know that the daily cash burn is alarming when you, when you look at it. But value is being created in the deepest, darkest, darkest corners of Hylion right now as we speak. And I think right now they're not getting proper acknowledgement to their potential for staying power. Now, if they can earn enough top line revenues to really start to augment the cash burn, slow that cash burn, and maybe even fortify that cash burn enough to where we can get a little bit of favor in the stock, I do foresee highly on doing the uh, capital raise. And I think it'll be very healthy to do so when they understand and be able to monitor from at least an initial perspective hopefully more, but initial perspective on how well received the original um, ERX units have have been in the in the in the in the fleets. And I, I say stand by for rolls. I really do. I'm sitting back comfortably. I'm sitting back confidently. Um, I'm very interested from an investor's perspective to to enjoy. Uh, those milestones with regard to each and every one or two delivery ERXs to each of the fleets. And then to track those fleets, I'm interested to see what new fleets are brought into the fold. I'm interested to see what of the legacy fleets are still um, interested in uh, flying the Hylion flag and and running the units in their fleet. I'm I'm still standing by and we are in, we haven't even started the game. If nothing else, we are first batter, first inning. Nothing has started now. Nothing in the in the past matters except for what is to come tomorrow and into the future with the company as it evolves. Do we have the potential to look at a company that has augmented the, the fleets? Do we have a potential to look at a company to say, see, I, I told you, everything that we knew about the hyper truck ERX was very, very real. We had the answer right there in front of our faces. We had the opportunity of a lifetime. And for you guys that I'm trying to speak to about understanding that psychology about financial markets, now is the very time that is the most difficult. Now is the most difficult. It is the most mind taxing. It is the most difficult to identify those opportunities when nobody else, nobody else is looking at the opportunity. Conversely, buying NVIDIA, piece of cake. Easiest thing you can do. The difference between those two dynamics is that seeking out opportunity from an independent perspective when nobody else is looking at it, as opposed to being a group thinker and a, a follower of the crowd, is going to define you as an investor that knows as opposed to an investor that does not know. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the weekly update to the Hylion story as we evolve. In summary, eliminate all time frames. Okay. Time frames are great for the company to project upon uh, baselines, but from an investor's perspective, we have to look at this thing as putting each and every share in motion now. Think about the value every single day. Think about the learnings that are going on. Think about the expansion of the team. Think about the improvements. Think about every day towards certification. Think about every day that companies have another chance to be introduced to the highly on opportunity, none of which, in my assessment, is getting any credit whatsoever in the market. And I think it's a mistake. I think it's a, um, a bridge to gap. I think it is, is a, a disconnect that is very, very real. And for those that look to profit from it, uh, will indeed profit from it if we can get this off on the right foot and we can be invested in a company before the hype starts. Guys, I appreciate you. If you enjoy the information, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Hit the like button and uh, we will catch you next week for the Hylion update. Guys, thank you so much again and good luck in your investment future.